Hi, um, today we're going to talk about Cotard Syndrome. Have you ever wondered what it would feel like to be dead? If you're like most people, the contemplation of death comes and goes from time to time, intruding our thoughts for a few seconds and then gets neatly tucked away in some safe area in the back of your mind. We all realize that death is inevitable, and we each have our own philosophies about what will happen to us once we die. But what would you do if one day you began to believe you were dead and nothing changed? What if all of your beliefs about some afterlife simply didn't transpire, and in fact the only person that knew that you were dead was you? What if nobody believed you when you tried to tell them that you were in fact really and truly dead? Of course, you could tell that you were dead because you have no pulse and you can see your skin falling from your bones and even smell your flesh rotting. You may feel nothing at all. You may not have any kind of feeling of connection to life. You may not experience love and in fact, you may not feel any emotions whatsoever. Well, if this ever happens to you, you probably have Cotard Syndrome. Cotard syndrome is a specific nihilistic delusion named after Jules Cotard, a French neurologist, who first described the condition in 1880. Major symptoms include the belief that one does not exist or that he or she is already dead. Um, they also believe that they may be missing uh, their hearts or their, their heart or their lungs. Um, their digestive system might be gone or they may not uh, believe they have a brain. Uh, they may have a sense of feeling uh, abject hopelessness or believe that they're being damned or um, possessed. Some uh, patients, Cotard patients, uh, attempt suicide or try to hurt themselves. Or they may believe the exact opposite. They may believe that they're immortal and that they can't die because they have absolutely no sensitivity to pain whatsoever. Some uh, Cotard's patients have auditory and olfactory based hallucinations, uh, like they'll hear accusatory voices or they'll believe that they're smelling their own body rotting. Uh, some of them believe uh, like they become enormous, uh, believing that their body has suddenly really grown huge and in fact this may extend to where uh, the patient feels that they've grown bigger than the whole entire earth and they can actually touch the stars. Um, well, let's uh, talk about some patient experiences of this. Uh, a 1956 uh, case study that involved a 38-year-old woman uh, who believed that everything inside and outside of her body had died. Uh, she believed that the moon and the earth and the stars and time itself didn't exist anymore and that she alone survived the initial explosion that created the universe and was in fact a carbonized star and that she was condemned to wander uh, the empty world forever. So uh, another thing that Cotard patients experience uh, is a desire to commit suicide, as is the case of an 18-year-old boy with psychotic depression who made several suicide attempts uh, due to the belief that uh, he and certain family members had already died and that he could feel his insides rotting away. Uh, it's funny because despite their self-perceived state of already being dead or immortal, Cotard syndrome patients still feel like they need to destroy themselves because it's their only means of escaping their self-perceived damnation. Uh, another thing that Cotard patients experience is starvation. Uh, as you know, they already believe that they've died uh, or become immortal or that their organs are missing or not functioning. Um, some patients will re refuse to eat or drink. Uh, for example, a 61-year-old female patient that came in uh, and she only weighed 86 and a half pounds believed that she was lacking a digestive tract to absorb food and drink and that her bowels were not functioning at all. So uh, let's kind of take a look at what some of the possible causes uh, of Cotard syndrome could be. Well, it's most frequently observed in patients with psychotic depression or schizophrenia and is managed by focusing the treatment on the underlying disorder. However, it's also observed in brain injury patients. 
Um, a more recent and popular hypothesis uh, for a contributing factor of Cotard syndrome is dam damage to the limbic system, which is an information processing subsystem in the brain where recognition of faces and scenes and objects are associated with a feeling of familiarity through sensory input. For example, the hippocampus recalls specific facets of the sensory experience and links, that, links them with details of past events, especially with regard to visual signals. It's been suggested that sensory information reaches the amygdala by two routes. One route is direct via the thalamus and supports a quick uh, primitive emotional response and the second round is indirect via the cortex and results in a slower, more cognitive response. Um, also, hallucinations and delusions are associated with limbic dysfunction uh, that involves both superficial and deep structures of the temporal lobe. Delusions are more often seen in the left temporal lobe when it's involved and the presence of auditory or visual hallucinations uh, correlates more with right temporal lobe damage. So it's easy to understand that many intricately connected systems are involved in the disconnect process that results in a complete emotional detachment from the world uh, for Cotard's patients. When we think about these complex connections being disrupted, we see how this contributes to the wide variety of symptoms that Cotard patients can experience. So, what's the treatment um, for Cotards? Well, to be able to treat a person with Cotard syndrome, the doctor uh, most likely will order neuroimaging studies, like a, a CT scan to visualize the condition of the ventricles and blood flow to the brain, or an MRI in cases involving trauma. And sometimes there will be a physical cause for the disorder, and other times it can be psychogenic. Uh, pharmacological treatments are often used to, tr to uh, control symptoms uh, and for some people uh, electroconvulsive therapy can actually be helpful as a form of treatment. Uh, the treatment options of course are dependent on what caused the condition in the first place. So the reality of this syndrome is that it is highly, highly impactful on the lives of those who suffer from Cotard's. Symptoms may be short in duration or in very sad situations, they can last an entire lifetime. Um, I really hope that this video has been helpful to you and thanks for listening.